Hello friends, in the previous videos we studied about the two cases for the variation of earth pressure. The first case was the dry soil and second case was the soil with the water table at a particular depth H1. Now we are moving further towards the third case for the variation of earth pressure and the third case for the earth pressure is the soil with the stratification that means we are studying about the stratified soil stratified soil means there are layers of soil for example if this is your retaining wall and there are two different type of soil present here the first soil is of depth h1 with a value of phi as phi 1 and gamma as gamma 1. Whereas the second soil is of depth H2 with a phi of phi 2 and gamma equals to gamma 2. Now, we have assumed that both the soil are cohesionless. That means the value of C for both the cases is 0 as it was stated by the Rankine theory that the Rankine theory is applicable only for the cohesionless soil. So now we are going to start here about the diagram of the earth pressure. But to draw the diagram of earth pressure, we have to calculate the value of effective vertical stress as we know that the horizontal stress will be equal to some Ka into sigma v dash. To calculate the value of sigma h dash, we have to first plot the variation of sigma v dash and for this particular case, we know that the effective stress will be zero at the top and for first h1 depth, the weight will increase by a gamma of gamma 1. Whereas after that, the weight of first soil will remain constant and the weight of the second soil will increase at a rate of gamma 2 and the effective stress at the bottom will be equals to gamma 1 into h1 plus gamma 2 into h2. This was the diagram of the effective stress as we plotted in the chapter of effective stress. But now to plot the diagram for horizontal pressure, we have to know what is the relation between sigma 1 and sigma 2. I am taking here that the first case between the sigma 1 and sigma 2 is that sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2. Sorry, that is phi 1 and phi 2. But if the case is like that, that phi 1 is greater than phi 2, then first of all, we have to calculate whether the value of Ka will be Ka1 will be more or Ka2 will be more as we know that value of Ka is equals to 1 minus sine phi upon 1 plus sine phi you can easily say that if the value of phi increases the value of Ka will decrease you can check that by putting the values of phi1 and phi2 as some example then you will see that if the value of phi is increasing, the value of Ka will be less. And hence, you can say that for this particular case, the value of Ka1 will be lesser than the value of Ka2. What is the use of Ka1 and Ka2 relation? The use is that for the soil 1, whenever you are in soil 1, you will, go, you will use the value of Ka1. Whereas, if you are in soil 2, you will use the value of K as K2. So now, we already know that the horizontal stress is equals to Ka into sigma V dash. For the first soil, we are going to use Ka1 and for the second soil, we are going to use K2. Let this is the zero line. At the beginning, we already know that the horizontal stress should be equals to zero as the vertical stress is zero. But if we are taking some points here, the point A and B both are at the same level, but point A is in the soil 1 and point B is in the soil 2. And the another point I am taking is in soil 2, that is point C. So if I am going to calculate the horizontal stress at A, we can say that 
it will be equals to k into sigma v dash at a but as a as the point a is in soil one we have to use k one so it will be equals to k a one into sigma v dash at a is gamma one into h one whereas if we are going to calculate the sigma h dash at b we have to use sigma v dash into b into k a but as the point b is in soil two we have to use k a two but as the level difference between a and b is not much the value of effective stress will be again gamma 1 into h1 hence you can say that it will be k 2 into gamma 2 sorry gamma 1 into h1 here you can see that the value of k 1 is smaller and k 2 is greater that means you can say that the second value will be more and while plotting the graph you can see that till the point a that is at the interface the value will be increased linearly from 0 to the value of ka1 into gamma1 into h1 but as soon as we move from point a to b the value will increase suddenly as the value of ka2 is more the value at point b will be equals to ka2 into gamma1 into h1 the value of horizontal stress will increase suddenly to k2 into gamma 1 h1 now if we are going to calculate the horizontal stress at point c you can see that we have to multiply the sigma v dash at point c with the k as the point c is in soil 2 you have to multiply k2 what is the value of effective vertical stress at c the c is this value so ka2 into gamma 1 h1 plus gamma 2 h2 it can be written again as ka2 gamma 1 h1 plus ka2 gamma 2 h2 you can see here that this term is again repeated here that means the increase value is this that means this term will remain constant till the end but the increase in the horizontal stress is equals to k2 into gamma 2 into h2 whereas the original value was k2 into gamma 1 into h1 so this will be the diagram for the earth pressure for this particular case the first case was that phi 1 was greater than phi 2 what will happen if the phi 1 is lesser than phi 2 then definitely the value of ka1 will be greater than the ka2 the values will be same the terms or expressions will be same but the value of ka2 and ka1 are changed so in this particular case you can see that the diagram will increase gradually and at the point a it will become equals to k1 into gamma 1 into h1 at point b it will be again k2 into gamma 1 into h1 but the value of k2 is smaller hence at point b the value should decrease suddenly and that will become equals to k2 into gamma 1 into h1 and that will be smaller than the earlier value so the graph will suddenly fall and after that this value will remain constant and there will be again an increase and that increase will be equals to ka2 gamma 2 h2 whereas the original value was ka2 gamma 1 h1 so this will be the diagram for this particular case when the phi 1 is lesser than phi 2 and this will be the diagram for the case that phi 1 is greater than phi 2 for both the two cases the expressions are same but the values are different for this particular two cases we can easily calculate the value of earth pressure force and the value of earth pressure force for this particular case will be again equals to the area of the earth pressure diagram hence you can see that the earth pressure force will be equals to the area of earth pressure diagram and as the diagram is already divided into some geometrical figures the first figure is this triangle second figure is this rectangle and third figure is this 
again a triangle so you can say that the total area will be for the first triangle the area will be equals to half ka1 gamma1 into h1 is the base whereas height is h1 for the second figure that is a rectangle the area will be base into height that will be equals to ka2 into gamma1 into h1 into height is h2 for the rectangle whereas for the third triangle the triangle area is half base into height that will be equals to half base is ka2 into gamma2 into h2 whereas height is h2 so this will be the final total earth pressure force because of these two stratified soil if we want to calculate the line of action of the resultant force we can easily use here the varignan theorem what does the varignan theorem says varignan theorem says that moment due to moment due to resultant force should be equals to the moments due to or summation of moments due to individual forces moments due to individual forces that means if we are taking that this force is f1 then we can say that the force f1 because of this triangular diagram will be acting at a distance of h1 by 3 from this particular point but the total distance from the base will be equals to h2 plus h1 by 3 similarly for the second that is rectangle its cg will be at mid height and let that force is f2 it will act at a distance of h2 by 2 as the cg of rectangle will be at midpoint whereas for the third case the force will be f3 and that force f3 will be acting at a distance of h2 by 3 so the total force can be divided into these three individual forces and according to varignan theorem we can see that the moments due to first force that is f1 into z1 what will be z1 z1 will be the lever arm but as we know that the failure will take place about the base we have to calculate the moments about its base that means we have to take the lever arm as this distance similarly the second force is f2 into its lever arm z2 plus third force is f3 into z3 should be equals to the net force that is summation of forces into overall line of action i am assuming that the overall line of action for the resultant force is at a distance of z bar i have to calculate this value of z bar only so to start with again i am putting the values of summation f summation f will be nothing but that will be f1 plus f2 plus f3 as we have calculated this is the summation f into z bar z bar is to be determined whereas f1 will be nothing but that will be the force due to the first triangle and that will be equals to half ka1 into gamma1 into h1 into h1 this will be the force but the line of action will be at a distance of h2 plus h1 by 3 whereas the second force will be equals to ka2 into gamma 1 into h1 into h2 and its distance will be equals to h2 by 2 third force will be equals to half ka2 gamma 2 h2 into h2 and its distance from the base will be equals to h2 by 3 so this will be the equation from which we can easily calculate the value of z bar and z bar will give you the point from which the resultant force line of action will pass z bar is the distance from the base from which the resultant force line of action will pass so according to this particular calculations we can easily calculate the line of action of the resultant force we can easily calculate the resultant earth pressure force and we can easily draw the diagram for the earth pressure variation so this was the case of the stratified soil i hope you all understood this particular case 
and now we are going to discuss some few more cases including the surcharge and for the summer soil in the next video till then lagatar padhte rahe badhte rahe happy engineering